In this second video now on voltage, on current, and on resistance, we're going to look at how these apply in series and parallel circuits. So the previous video was on just definitions and understanding what they really meant. This video, on the other hand, is how do we use these ideas to answer questions? Now let's just quickly summarize the key ideas that you're going to be learning in this video. The first one is on current. In a series circuit, if you remember, there's only one pathway. So the current all around the whole circuit stays constant. Whereas when we're talking about a parallel circuit, when there's more than one pathway, the current splits up into the multiple pathways. And therefore, the current gets shared amongst different pathways. We'll cover both of these in more depth in the future, but just get an idea of what's coming up. Next, if we talk about voltage, voltage has to get split up. The energy has to get shared amongst all the components in a series circuit. However, in a parallel circuit, because the whole circuit splits up, all of the current still keeps its energy. So all of the parallel branches have a constant voltage on them. And finally, if we're talking about resistors, when we have more resistors in series, that's going to create more resistance overall. And the formula for more resistors in series is just your total resistance is R1, your first resistance, plus R2, your second resistance, plus R3. And you can add together as many resistors as you want. So you can see the more resistors you add in, the bigger this total resistance gets. However, when we look at parallel circuits, more resistors added in parallel actually gives a smaller resistance overall. And that's shown by the second formula here, that 1 divided by R total is 1 divided by your first resistor plus 1 divided by your second resistor. And that's actually going to work out that this total gets smaller as you add in more resistors. And we'll see again as we progress through this video why that actually happens. So here I'm going to relate every example to three different circuits. The first one here is a series circuit. This is where there's only one pathway. The second one is a parallel circuit where there's three different pathways. And the third one is a combination of series and parallel. It's series because we have one component, this 9 ohm resistor in series. All the current has to go through this one. But we have a 10 ohm and a 5 ohm in parallel with each other. There's two different pathways here. So we'll look at them all in a combination, in parallel, and in series. The first thing we're going to look at is current. Now current in a series circuit is constant all of the way around. Because when we start at the top here, the current will move around this branch, move through here, all the way back around to the battery. Now that whole time it doesn't split up, it doesn't change. It just carries on going all the way around the circuit. So this whole pathway is completely singular. The current will stay the same the whole way around. It must keep going the same speed. Whereas when we look at a parallel circuit, the current is shared. And the current is shared between all of the different branches. But hopefully you can see how the current is going to come down here and it has three different options of where to go. It has to choose how we do that. And we're going to have formulas which show you exactly how to work out each of these branches. And once the current has passed through each of these different resistors, it adds back together again when it comes back around to the battery. Now with a shared circuit where we have series and parallel, the current's going to come out of the battery. As a series circuit, the whole current is going to go straight through this resistor here, the 9 ohm resistor. Then it's going to split up and go either through the 10 ohm resistor before going back up to the battery or through the 5 ohm resistor before going up to the battery. So it's a combination of the two. So hopefully you understand that series is a constant current all the way around, whereas in a parallel circuit, there is a shared current all the way through these different levels here. Now let's remember our famous formula that V equals IR, voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. So if we look at the shared circuit, because this is probably the most confusing one, if we initially have a current of 1.95 amps, there's going to be a total of 1.95 amps passing through this 9 ohm resistor here. Then the current is going to split up. Now it doesn't split up evenly. This top resistor is twice as big, it has twice as much resistance, therefore half as much current is going to be able to go through it. So the current splits up 0.65 in this top arm here through the 10 ohm resistor and 1.3 twice as much through the bottom arm through the 5 ohm resistor before the current joins back up to make 1.95 amps in total. So in the series part of this circuit, the current is exactly the same. It's only when we get to parallel that the current becomes shared. And this is a really common thing that you need to understand happens. 
Next, let's look at voltage. Now, voltage is the opposite to current in this sense. In series, the voltage has to be shared out between all of the different components. There's only one way for the current to go around, and remember, voltage is how much energy each of those parts of current have. So because there's only one pathway for them to go around, they have to share that energy amongst all of the different components. Whereas if we talk about parallel circuits, they can give their energy, their 24 volts, to the whole resistor that they pass through. Current is either going to pass through the 10 ohm resistor, or it's going to pass through the 5 ohm resistor, or it's going to pass through the 9 ohm resistor, but never all three. So they can give all of their energy to each one of these resistors in turn. So each one of these resistors is going to get the full 24 joules of energy for every coulomb that passes through them. So therefore, the voltage remains constant the whole way through this parallel circuit in each arm. So in this first circuit, we would split up the 24 volts proportionally to how big the resistance was. Now, that means there might be 9 volts used up on this 9 ohm resistor, there might be 5 volts used up on this 5 volt resistor, and there would be 10 volts used up on the 10 volt resistor. Now it's a little bit of a fluke that these voltages and the resistances are the exact same number, but get the idea that a 10 ohm resistance is twice as big as a 5 ohm resistance, and therefore it uses up twice as much voltage. There's going to be 24 volts in total used up as the current goes around the circuit so that then the current will get back to the battery, collect another 24 volts, and give it all away again. When we're talking about a parallel circuit though, remember the current comes down here, it splits up into the three different branches before it joins together and carries on around to the battery. Now here, we have a full 24 volts given to this 10 ohm resistor. We have a full 24 volts from all those charges that come through the 5 ohm resistor, and again we have a full 24 volts of energy from all of the current that passes through the 9 ohm resistor. The voltages are the same in all of these parallel branches. Now looking at this last circuit, the shared circuit, where there's a series part and a parallel part. Again, if we use the same numbers of 1.95 amps of current, and we join through with our formula V equals IR, we can work out the voltage in each of these resistors. So the voltage in this first resistor would have to be 1.95 amps, because that's the current passing through there, that's I in this equation, multiplied by R, the resistance here, which is 9 ohms, and that would give us the voltage used by this resistor. And that gives us a voltage of 17.6 volts. So now we know how much voltage this specific resistor is using. So if a coulomb of charge is going around this wire, around to here, it gives away 17.6 out of its total of 24 joules of energy. So all that it has left out of its total of 24 joules is 6.4 volts because it's used up 17.6 already. Now that coulomb of charge could either go through the 10 ohm resistor and give away the rest of its 6.4 volts, or it could go through the 5 ohm resistor and give away its 6.4 volts. Either way, there's going to be 6.4 volts given away to each of these resistors, meaning that each coulomb of charge would have given away in total 24 joules of energy. So hopefully you can see how the series part takes it off both of them. It's shared when you're talking about series, but once we look at just the parallel part, it's exactly the same. Now let's look at the resistance. We learned at the very start that adding more resistors in series meant a bigger resistance overall. And we learnt that adding resistors in parallel means a smaller resistance overall. So let's see why that actually happens now. If we have the formula here that the total resistance is adding all of these series resistances together, and we have the formula that adding them all in parallel means that we have a lower resistance, these are actually enough evidence for you to use in your explanations. You say it gets bigger in series because of this formula, or it gets smaller in parallel because of this formula. Now these are not cop-out explanations, these are very succinct relationships that you've learned in physics which can explain why it happens. But I do realize that that doesn't actually help you understand it, it just helps you answer the question. So just before I go and explain it to you at a deeper level, let's check that this actually does hold true using these formulas. Looking at this first circuit here, our total would be given by adding all the resistors together. So we add together the 9 ohm resistor, the 5 ohm resistor, and the 10 ohm resistor, and we find we have a total of 24 ohms. Now, if we were to rearrange these resistors in a different combination, like in this parallel circuit, the total resistance would be lower. 
So writing out our total resistance formula for parallel circuits, we have one over the total resistance equals one over the first resistor plus one over the second resistor plus one over the third resistor. Once we've plugged those in, we can find that one over our total resistance equals 37 divided by 90 ohms. Now remember, this gives you one divided by what you're trying to find. That's not your answer by itself. So actually our total resistance equals this flipped on its head equals 90 divided by 37, which is 2.43 ohms. So the whole resistance of the circuit is 2.43 ohms. It's less than any of these individual resistors by themselves. So now let's actually figure out why this happens. Now imagine you've got the entrance to a bar here and standing blocking the entrance is a 100 kg bouncer stopping you getting in the door. Now how fast you can get in the door, think of that as being the current. And this bouncer who's stopping you getting in the door is like the resistor. So if you only have one door to go into the bar, that's just like a series circuit. There's only one pathway to get in. That's what the definition says. So if you're standing in line here, more resistors or more bouncers are just going to hold up the flow. However, if I open a second door to the bar and put an even bigger bouncer on it, he say it's a 200 kg bouncer right now, you can still get in the 100 kg bouncer door to start with, but actually some people can move across and go into the second door. So even though I've added another bouncer into the equation, you can actually get through in another way. So it's going to speed up the process of all of the queues of people getting into the bar. Now in the exact same way, if you have another pathway in a circuit, like another door into the bar, it's going to be easier for the charge to get through the second option, because they don't all have to file through the exact same person or the exact same pathway. So now we have 300 kgs of bounces, rather than just the 100 kgs we started with, but you're still going to be able to get through those doors faster, because there's two doors now. So that's why in a parallel circuit when we have multiple pathways, adding resistors in in parallel actually decreases your resistance overall because it just gives the charges another option. Whereas in series, if we only have one door, adding in another bouncer is just going to slow the process up, meaning you have bigger resistance overall. So hopefully that gives you an idea of why the resistance goes down in parallel. Now we've seen how to do calculations in series and how to do calculations in parallel. Let's see how you do a calculation when you have a combination. And that's actually quite a common thing to be given in your exams. So the first step of what you have to do, you have to calculate the total parallel resistance. So only look at the parallel resistors. Then you can use your parallel resistor formula that's down the bottom right hand side here to work out what that actually will equal. So here we have one over our total resistance is one divided by the 10 ohm resistor plus one divided by the five ohm resistor. So if we put that into our calculator, we find that one over our total resistance is 10 divided by three, which gives us 3.3 ohms in total resistance for this parallel part of the circuit. So now that we've kind of joined this 10 ohm resistor and the five ohm resistor into an equivalent one resistor, that's 3.3 ohms, we can treat it like series. We've got this whole bunched area together in series with the nine ohm resistor. So we can use our series formula of R total equals R1 plus R2. And remember, R2 is this whole combined parallel resistor thing here. So adding those two resistances together, the 9 ohms and the 3.3 ohms in total, gives us a total resistance for this whole circuit of 12.3 ohms. So if you ever have to do a combined circuit, work out the parallel section first, and then add that onto any series sections that there are. And just do it piece by piece. Now let's see what you need to know from this video. You need to know that V equals IR can be used for individual components. Remember how we just looked at one resistor and that individual resistance? We just looked at the current going through that individual resistor and that meant we could work out the voltage. You can also use it for the whole circuit by doing the voltage of the battery, the resistance of the whole circuit, and that will give you the overall current of the whole circuit, which means the current going through the battery. Second, we learned that current is constant going all the way around a series circuit, but it has to be shared when it gets split up in a parallel circuit with multiple pathways. We also learned that voltage gets shared in a series circuit because each charge only has a certain amount of energy, and because it goes through every different component in a series circuit, it has to share that energy between all of the components. However, in a parallel circuit, it only goes through one component, so it can give that whole component all of its energy or all of its voltage and therefore 
Each arm in a parallel circuit has a constant voltage. Also remember that adding more resistors in series gives a bigger resistance overall. That's like adding more bounces on the same door. However, adding more resistors in parallel gives a smaller resistance overall because that's like opening up different doors to the bar. You have several options of which one to go through. And therefore, the current has multiple options of which pathways to go through as well. Now let's look at a question. In this question, Mark is in a caravan. He notices that when he attaches his game into the circuitry, there's a 6 volt reading across this 4 ohm resistor. Now we need to explain what removing this game will do to the voltage across this 4 ohm resistor. So let's see what would happen. And the first thing is we initially measured 6 volts across this 4 ohm resistor. That's what it says in the question here. And we're going to remove this game and see what effect it has. So the first key idea that you need to know is that in parallel, if we add in resistors, that's going to be a smaller resistance overall. Or the reverse is true, that less resistors means a larger resistance overall. So if we take the game away from parallel, which is what we're doing, that's going to lead to a larger resistance overall. Now, we've only got a series circuit because we've taken out the parallel component. So now, our R total would equal the 4 ohms up the top here, plus the 12 ohms down the bottom here, because the game isn't part of it anymore. That gives a total resistance of 16 ohms. However, if we look at when the game was included, we would have had a total parallel resistance just for this section here, of 1 over the 6 ohms for the game, plus 1 over the 12 ohms for this other resistor down the bottom. That would have given us a total resistance of 4 ohms. Now, if we worked out the total circuit resistance, that includes this 4 ohms up here as well, we'd have to use the series equation, which would give us 4 ohms for this total parallel section down the bottom, and add that onto the 4 ohms over the right here, giving us a total resistance of 8 ohms. So this first resistance we worked out was once we'd taken the game out, the second resistance we worked out was when we had the game included, and these resistances are total resistances. So you'll notice that taking the game out actually means the whole resistance of the circuit has doubled from 8 ohms to 16 ohms. So what effect does this have on the voltage of the 4 ohm resistor? Let's see. We have the formula that V equals IR. So we can work out what the current was in the circuit before we took out the game. Now, we knew that the voltage is 12 volts. That's not going to change. We still have a 12 volt battery. And we now know that the overall resistance was 8 ohms. So plugging those numbers into this formula, we can calculate that the initial current was 1.5 amps going around the circuit. Now we can do the same thing for when we take the game out, except now we still have the 12 volt battery, but the resistance has gone up to 16 ohms that we calculated earlier. Therefore the current will have dropped to 0.75 amps, half of what it was before. So not only has taking out the game doubled this resistance, but that means that we've halved the overall current going around the circuit. Now let's see what effect that has on voltage. So just focusing on this component, because remember we can look at individual components now, we can work out what the voltage will be now after we've taken out the game. So using V equals IR, we know the current going through this individual component. It's in series with the battery, so it's 0.75 amps. We know the resistance of this component, it's 4 ohms. Therefore, we can work out the voltage. The voltage now that we've taken out the game is 0.75 amps multiplied by 4 ohms, and that gives us 3 volts. So in actual fact, the voltage has decreased from 6 volts, which we started with, all the way down to 3 volts when we take out the game. So the voltage will decrease due to the increased overall resistance and the decreased current through the resistor. And that would be your final answer. So I've tried to combine everything in here. That's an excellence level explanation if you can use this. But just remember, if you take out something in parallel, it increases the overall resistance. And you can prove that using these equations. Then it's back to using V equals IR for the whole circuit and for individual components, and you'll be able to get your answer.